Beluga Savruga, come winds of the Caspian Sea. Ursula is one of the scariest, most devious, and most manipulative villains in Disney's history. <clears throat> Her animator, on the other hand, is one of the sweetest, most talented animators in Disney history. Talk about the duality of man. Want to find out more? Want me to stop singing? Just stay tuned. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Discord, our coffee page, and like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the things. It really helps us out. Ruben A. Aquino was born on December 18, 1953 in Okinawa, Japan, and grew up in the neighboring city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Like many prolific artists, he showed interest and talent very early. I always loved drawing cartoons when I was a kid. Never thought I'd make a career out of it. But I loved Disney. I loved watching the uh, Disney's Wonderful World of Color on TV. This is back in Okinawa where we had one uh, English language uh, TV station, the military uh, station on Okinawa. Uh, and uh, we watched uh, the Disney uh, program uh, every Sunday night. It, it was called uh, uh, Wonderful, Disney's Wonderful World of Color, but we had a black and white TV, so we actually watched it in black and white, but, <laughs> but it was great. Uh, and I loved the Disney uh, cartoons, um, but um, I always liked uh, drawing my own cartoon characters and uh, I would you know, do little scribbles and doodles on, on, a, on their, uh, in the, uh, of my own, uh, <clears throat> make my own uh, comic books. Uh, not very good, but you know that's kind of the stuff I like to do as a hobby. After graduating high school, he attended the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia and majored in, you guessed it, architecture. Wait, architecture? When I was a kid in grade school, uh, I thought I'd become an architect. My uh, dad, he's from the Philippines. My mom's Japanese, my dad's Filipino. And he always told us, uh, uh, he told me, because I was good at uh, math and I was good at art, that uh, I should become an architect because uh, in the Philippines where he grew up, that was a very highly uh, respected profession. And uh, so the, he thought that was a natural career path for me. And uh, so I pursued that. Uh, in, in college, that's what I majored in. I wound up uh, graduating in 1975. We we're in the middle of a recession. I'm sure a lot of folks out there uh, remember the 2008 recession. Well, this is kind of similar. Mm -hmm. uh, there, nobody was hiring architects. Uh, people were not building buildings. Uh, economy was slowing down. So I couldn't get a job in my chosen profession, architecture. And so Ruben decided to move to where his parents relocated, Hawaii, where he would discover things were even worse, sort of a trouble in paradise situation. I finally landed a job in a graphics department of a print shop in Honolulu, um, in a very industrial area of Honolulu called Kaka'ako. And it was a very blue collar place. Uh, it was basically a print shop with a graphics department upstairs to uh, provide camera ready art for the customers. But you know, it got boring. I was doing that for four years and I really didn't like it. Uh, but then one day uh, I heard that there was a uh, animation studio from uh, LA that had moved over to uh, Honolulu and they were looking for trainees. It, it was kind of weird. My boss actually told me about that. He showed me a newspaper article on it uh, and he knew I wasn't uh, happy at this at the graphics department at, at the print shop, and he wasn't the owner. He was just my mm -hmm. boss. But so I applied, um, and uh, it turned out they uh, they liked my uh, uh, portfolio of drawings that I had. Didn't have very much, but it was just enough. The principals um, who owned the studio, uh, Fred and Kimmy Calvert, actually uh, worked at Disney back in the fifties, and I guess they were like uh, assistant animators or animating assistants. Um, and uh, so uh, Kimmy Calvert was the one I worked with mostly, and she taught me all the uh, basic tricks of the trade, <laughs> the Disney style of animation. So I did a little bit of everything. That was like going to school for me, working at a small animation studio. So I did uh, some uh, cleanup, some in-between, some, uh, a little bit of rough animation, um, uh, ink and paint, um, I shot camera. Uh, I did some background layout. So 
a little bit of everything. Uh, and so that was a great education for me. Unfortunately, around 1980, the little animation studio closed and the team moved back to L.A. Ruben was invited to join them, and he ended up with a job at that Smurfin Smurf studio, Hanna-Barbera. Uh, and worked on the uh, Smurfs, the original TV Smurf show. Oh, series. sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you remember that show. Uh, and also, uh, mm-hmm. there was a show uh, featuring the... Uh, you remember uh, Fonzie and the Happy Days gang on the TV shoots, uh, live action show? Well, they did an animated version of that yeah. uh, featuring a dog named Mr. Cool. Unfortunately, or in hindsight, fortunately, Ruben was laid off after a few months with many other artists. This was a usual occurrence for the industry, and Ruben, having just joined the cartoonist union, decided to take the opportunity to take a few classes. Because education is key. I was taking a class at the uh, union, the cartoonist union uh, in L.A., and it was a uh, kind of basic of animation class by Art Babbitt, the legendary uh, Disney uh, animator. And it was only uh, like a six-week course or something like that. Okay. Uh, but uh, I learned so much from Art Babbitt. Art was uh, a, not just a great animator, but an excellent teacher. The book uh, by Frank, uh, Thomas and Ollie Johnson, The Illusion of Life, came out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I bought that book, of course, and uh, read it cover to cover. And that was uh, life-changing for me, too. That and the uh, class by Art Babbitt. So, uh, one of my classmates was from Disney. She was in cleanup, and she said that Disney was uh, hiring um, people. They were looking for cleanup artists. At the time, I was thinking I'd like to pursue it. You know, character animation. Uh, but I knew it was a foot in the door, so I applied anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was, uh, uh, luckily, I had a, a portfolio of uh, thick, more figure drawings <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, a little bit of animation I'd done on my own. Uh, so I applied and I got into that you know, program uh, at Disney. Mm-hmm. Like many other new employees at the time, Ruben began his training with Eric Larson. Being on the cleanup team, his first project for Disney was cleanup on Mickey's Christmas Carol. Aw, Merry Christmas, Reuben. But then, soon after he joined, the entire cartoonist union went on strike. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's bad luck. Uh, (laughs) As soon as I get into Disney, suddenly they have to go on strike. Uh, But it turned out uh, it was a good opportunity for me to do a pencil test, a rough animation pencil test. So we were out on strike for about two months Mm -hmm. and uh, so every week like on a Friday I would go out and join the other artists on the the picket line but the rest of the week I would be in my apartment working on that pencil test I picked a character from Black Cauldron it was an early design of Fluter Flam who's the uh, I don't know if you remember the movie but there's a minstrel character uh, named Fluter Flam Mm -hmm. he's kind of funny and he has a little moot I guess so I I did a pencil test with him and uh, he's jumping over some rocks on a little creek, mm-hmm. and a uh, frog scares him uh, as, as, when it jumps up from one of the rocks, and he slips and falls into the uh, water mm-hmm. and uh, drops his loot, and it falls into the water. The loot disappears. He's looking all over for it, and then finally he finds it, and, oh, he's so happy that it's not broken. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, boing, 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 all the springs break. <laughs> uh and then the frog jumps on his head. Uh, he's bald, you know, or that version of the uh, design, he was bald. Mm-hmm. And the frog jumps on his head like it's landing on a rock or something. But uh, anyway, it, it was a fun uh, little bit that I did. I, I was able to tweak my animation based on the uh, Super 8 uh, film and uh, fix the animation and then submitted it. It was like a 30-second bit of animation. And the review board took a look at it, and uh, they liked it, and... Uh, so they promoted me to animating assistant. So that's how I got into the animation end of uh, things. So. On the Black Cauldron, Ruben worked as a character animator on Dalbin. The Horned King, that black-hearted devil. What's he waiting for? This is cat. I know you want your breakfast, but just now thinking is more important. Hmm. By the end of Black Cauldron, um, which was, uh, you know, not that great a commercial success uh, or artistic success.
process. Um, I did get promoted to animator by the end of that, so I guess I was kind of happy about that. Mm -hmm. Now, the next picture after that was called uh, Basil Baker Street, uh, directed by uh, John Musker and Ron Clemens, mm -hmm. and they were both former animators. Uh, and that was like a ray of sunshine <laughs> in a very dark uh, you know, period of, of Disney animation. Mm -hmm. So th that one, everybody really had good feelings about. It was a musical. It had a great story, uh, great villain, uh, Glen Keane, um, animated Radigan in that one. Uh -huh. uh, and um, uh, everybody just really enjoyed working on that one. During the best Disney movie of all time, The Great Mouse Detective, of course, <clears throat> Adam, <sighs> Reuben worked on Glenn Keane's team as a character animator on Dawson. Uh, but, uh, where are your mother and father? That's why I m must find Basil. Oh, no, there, 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 there. No, 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 no. I, uh, well, no, I don't know any Basil. But I do remember where Baker Street is. Oh, come with me. We'll find this puzzle chap together. When Oliver and company rolled around, Ruben Aquino made his debut as a supervising animator by serving as the lead on Francis the Bulldog, Einstein the Great Dane, and Rita. Probably his most notable sequence animating in the film was animating Rita in the hip street song, Streets of Gold. I mo mostly worked with Francis. Uh, I did a couple of scenes with Rita. and Rita was actually animated mostly by Sean Keller, another, uh, another young animator, a uh, really talented animator. Uh, but the scene everybody remembers of Francis is the one where he emotes. He says, uh, my name is Francis, not Frank, not Frankie, Francis. And that was the scene that was actually animated by Andreas Deja. Um, he did that as a, a experimental scene. And, uh, so we, we, uh, uh, I, uh, put it on model pretty much cause the, you know, the model evolved over time, but it was still pretty much his, uh, animation that wound up on the screen. So <laughs> that's the one that everybody remembers, but it was a fun character. I really enjoyed, um, uh, I did all that stuff where he's emoting and, you know, they're staging that, uh, fake accident where he does his death scene, uh, so that was fun. He was a fun character. <clears throat> no! oh! A lot like casting for the voice of Ursula, which you can learn more about... Wait for it... Here, the casting of her animator was complicated. Originally, Glenn Keane was slotted to animate her since the last two characters he worked on were big, like Radigan and the Eagle from Rescuers Down Under. He was reassigned to Ariel after being blown away by Jody Benson's vocal performance on Part of Your World, and Ursula was given to Rob Minkoff. Rob, in turn, became a director, and Ursula was again animatorless. Enter our boy, Ruben A. Aquino. And of course, I jumped at the chance. Uh, mm -hmm. That was kind of a big plum that fell on my lap. Uh, <laughs> just out of the blue, I got a call from uh, Brown and John asking if I would like to supervise Ursula, of course, <laughs> of course I would. Um, uh, and I have to say that was probably the most fun I've had animating a character you know, throughout my whole Disney career. Ursula was just so much fun. Her voice was great. Uh, the character was great. 90% um, uh, of the design had already been done by the time I inherited the character. So, uh, but I, you know, I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, I, uh, uh, to put my own stamp on it. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of fun. Um, and also, I, I enjoyed uh, uh, working on our tentacles. Uh, we did a lot of research on uh, octopuses or octopi uh, for, that, for that role, for that character. Um, so I got a lot a, a big kick out of animating her tentacle. It was almost like animating another character. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of uh, kind of a lot of work, <laughs> but uh, it paid off. Uh, so we didn't have a whole lot of scenes where you could see her walking. Uh, but I did do that one scene in the beginning where you first see her for the first time coming out of her shell. Oh, yeah. uh, and then she lands and it does her little walk. Uh, that took a lot of time, but uh, uh, but I was so happy with how it turned out. Uh, and that half octopus half 
uh, human idea was not my idea. It came out of uh, other, you know, uh, people's uh, mm -hmm. um, ideas. But as I said, it was very collaborative. But it was such a great concept. I was involved early on in some early character designs for Ursula, uh, Ariel, Sebastian, a bunch of other characters in the movie. Mm -hmm. Where at the time I wasn't even assigned to any particular character, but a bunch of us took a shot at different characters, coming up with ideas for the designs. And at the time, all we knew was that Ursula was going to be half human and half uh, fish or some other underwater creature. Uh, and we didn't even have a voice at the time. Um, we, uh, Pat Carroll had not been cast at the time. Um, and I think originally they were thinking of uh, some kind of uh, uh, Joan Collins type character. Who Joan Collins was a big star back in the 80s. And uh, she was on a show called Dynasty, I think. And uh, she was thin and glamorous. And so that's originally how they were thinking of Ursula, uh, thin and glamorous. Of course, that changed a little bit. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. She was still glamorous in her own mind, you know. Uh, very much so. But, uh, very, but not thin. So. And um, Roy Disney was really um, keeping an eye on us. And it's, particularly, he was interested in Ursula, making sure uh, she was convincing as half octopus. Because he did a film, um, I think it was in the 60s, called um, uh, Mysteries of the Deep. Oh, okay. Where there are a lot of underwater creatures. Right, so right, he right. was very interested in that kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> so we had to make sure he was happy. Hercules. And it actually worked out because it was underwater, so all the movements were kind of slow and overlapping. Slowing. Uh, even though she could move quickly. And kind of creepy. Moved, yeah. In a good way. Mm -hmm. Well, in a very interesting way. You know, she could use all of the different aspects of her tentacles. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was right. beautiful. So it wasn't just it. a person walking on the ocean bottom. But it was a person, you know, walking with the undulating movements of an octopus. After Ursula's success, Reuben moved on to supervise Jake the Kangaroo Rat in Rescuers Down Under. This is a great example of Reuben's versatility. From Ursula's dramatic flamboyancy to the suave and fearless Jake, such a stark contrast, and yet Ruben pulls it off with grace and expertise. Again, talk about the duality of man. Mice don't really get up on their hind feet and walk around, you know, so how, how do you make it still look like a mouse and, and yet be a character, you know? It's really difficult. You're walking a fine line between the two worlds, you know? You want to make him believable, but you also want to make him believable as a character with a personality, you know, with facial expressions and gestures in the hands. And to hammer it in, Reuben then tackled Belle's eccentric father, crazy old Maurice. <coughs> Papa? How on earth did that happen? Oh, God. Are you all right, Papa? I, I'm, I'm about ready to give up on this hunk of junk. You always say that. I mean it this time. I'll never get this boneheaded contraption to work. Yes, you will. And you'll win first prize at the fair tomorrow. <laughs> and become a world-famous inventor. You really believe that? I always have. Reuben may have inherited Ursula as a character, but boy, did he knock it out of the park. She really is a convincing villain. And although animation is a collaborative medium, Ruben's contributions are undeniable. Ruben has a lot more animation up his sleeve, and we have more episodes about him in the pipeline. So stay tuned for more. Thank you to these people for supporting us on Patreon and Coffee. And if you want to make sure this channel sticks around, you can check out our Coffee link in the description. Every bit helps. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Click the thumbs up button below if you liked it. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another discography.